like to do is uh, show you how to graph a uh, polynomial function. And we're not going to be uh, using our graphing calculator. What we're going to do is we're going to learn how to graph a polynomial function by finding the zeros and by, uh, <clears throat> by, by using the leading coefficient test. So the first thing I want to do is I have my um, little x, y axis here. First thing I want to do is you know, find our, our uh, zeros. Remember, our zeros are going to be our x-intercepts. So our zeros are when f of x equals zero. That means our output value, which is f of x, is going to equal zero. And remember, that's the same thing as, here's your y-axis. It's kind of the same thing as your f of x-axis. It's dealing with your output. So when that value is zero, we're on the x-axis. So I have negative 4x cubed plus 4x squared plus 15x. First thing I look to do is see what can I take out of all these? You know, can I factor this in any form? And I always look and they all share an x, so I'll see if I can take out an x. So when I take out an x, I'm also, if I notice that's a negative, I don't ever want to have, usually don't like dealing with my negatives in front of my uh, leading term, so I'm going to factor out a negative x. Negative. So just make sure every sign is now going to change. All right. Now, for the sake of time on the video, the video is not made on factoring. Um, if you guys need help on, you know, how to factor this, I'll be more than happy to show. I have all the videos, so but I'm not going to spend time right now going over the factoring. Um, this is something you guys can figure out. Use the diamond method. Do you know whatever kind of method you need to. But I can factor this further. Zero equals a negative x. And I previously did it, so it ended up being 2x minus 5. 2x minus 5 times 2x plus 3. So now that I have my uh, factors looking like this, the next thing I'm going to want to do is I need to find exactly what the zeros are. So here's the list of you know the factors. I need to write them as zeros. So I say 0 equals negative x. 0 equals 2x minus 5, and 0 equals 2x plus 3. So when I solve, add an x, x equals 0, add 5, divide by 2, x equals a uh, 5 halves, and here I'm going to subtract by 3, then I'll divide by 2, and what I end up getting is x equals a negative 3 halves. So for those of you decimal people, what I'm going to have is now I have these three points. So to, what I need to do is I want to graph these three points. So I go back over to my table and I just do 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I go 0. That's one x-intercept. The next one was 2.5 right here. And the third one is a negative 1.5, right there. Now, uh, another thing you guys should know is these are all the multiplicity of 1. Each one of these had an exponent of 1. So they're at an odd multiplicity, and they're going to be a multiplicity of 1. One thing we need to remember about that is when they have an odd multiplicity, then we know that it's going to cross the axis at the intercepts. If they were even, If they're even, then we know they'd actually only touch at these points. But fortunately for us, we know that they're going to be odd, so they're going to cross at each one of those points. The next thing I need to look at is I need to look at our leading coefficient, or the leading coefficient test. And what you guys see is that is negative 4x cubed. And when you're looking at negative 4x cubed, the first thing we do is we look at if it's odd or even. Since it's odd, we know it's either gonna, it's gonna fall and it's gonna rise. Because even functions both fall or both rise. Odd functions rise and fall. And then the next thing I need to determine is if it's gonna be, if my a, the number in front of my uh, very term, is net positive or negative. If it's negative, we rise left, fall right. If it's positive, you fall left, rise right. So um, this is all, like I said, all on my um, all the videos you guys can see for as far as how to apply the leading coefficient test. So I know that this is a negative, so therefore my final end behavior 
my graph is going to go down like that, and it's going to fall to the right. I don't know what's going to happen in between here, but I know it's going to be fall to the right and uh, rise to the left. So the last thing we need to do, we have, we're going to do a little kind of little table points. All right, we have some points. We have uh, zero zero. We have uh, negative one point five. 0 and we have 2.5 0 well one thing you guys need to remember is that you know the intermediate value theorem says that you know between any two points we're going to be able to find a third point uh, so there always exists another point between these two points so we know there's a point that's between these two intercepts and we know there's a point between these two intercepts it's always good thinking to always check your work and always do a point outside of your last point and outside of this point which would have been like a, a negative two, and for here it would be one, two, three. For time purposes, I'm not gonna evaluate them. Actually, I think I might have already. Actually, I did. But it's really important to make sure you find the values between your two intercepts. So to do that, you need to evaluate um, for a point, and just pick a point. Well, it's pretty easy to do negative one and one. So you do f of negative one, which equals negative four times negative one cubed plus four times negative one squared plus 15 times negative one. And when you do the wet, you know, do the math, uh, you get negative one cubed is a negative one times four is gonna be a positive four. And you know, plus negative one squared is a positive one plus four is four and plus uh, negative 15, and therefore you get a negative seven. So negative one equals a negative seven. And for f of one, you do the exact same thing, but these are all gonna be positives. So what you actually end up getting is, um, I'll just write it down. All right, and I end up getting, when I do my math, I get one comma 15. So therefore I go over negative one and I go down seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, okay. It's gonna be something really high, high there. Um, so to graph, I now, my graph has to go through these three points. And then you can see, and this is at 1 comma 15, and this is at negative 1 7. Okay, my apologies for not really having the most perfect graph. But you guys can see, all you really need to do to find a graph something like that, to graph a polynomial function, is find the zeros, understand the leading coefficient test, determine the end behavior, and then just find you know, your extra points, and you can easily plot, um, plot the graph. Yeah. And that's pretty much what you guys need to do. Karina May, please report to the main office. Karina May, please report to the main office.